सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल दबाएं ताकि कोई खबर रह न जाए so we have watched china uh, there was a time when pakistan was considered one of the fastest growing countries in asia in the 60s and we heard that china learned a bit from pakistan and now is the time for pakistan china uh, personally the thing that inspires me most about china what inspires me most about china is the way they have lifted 700 million people out of poverty in 30 years this has never happened in human history and for someone who cares about humanity i think this is an example which the entire world can follow and learn from china so for me uh, this is the the most important thing pakistan can learn the way china has lifted people out of poverty and what i have understood so far china allowed their businesses to make money china concentrated on their special economic zones the export zones they brought in investment from outside they created wealth and from that wealth creation they spent it on the less privileged poor section of the society and that's how they've achieved the, the miracle and that's what we intend to do in pakistan uh, the other thing i've learned from china is the way china has tackled corruption president xi jinping's one of his biggest crusade has been against corruption and from what i hear uh, correct me if i'm wrong that some 400 people uh, ministerial level people in the last 5 years have been uh, convicted on corruption and put behind jail um, and then you know i read in the papers now i don't know whether it is true that there was a chinese mayor who tons of gold was found in his room and within 5 days he was convicted so why is this very important for not just pakistan but most of the developing world to learn from because the most important thing is if you have corruption it stops investment corruption is one of the biggest impediments in investment coming into your country the reason one of the main reasons why we have not been able to to uh, develop this great potential of pakistan has been the fact that red tapeism and red tapeism is also because of corruption when you slow down by slowing down procedures through red tape it is a way of getting speed money corruption money and corruption when firms have an opportunity of they can invest anywhere in the world they will always invest in economies that are cleaner economies where there are less impediments in the way of investment so i wish i could follow president xi's example and put 500 corrupt people in pakistan in jail <laughs> but unfortunately uh, unfortunately uh, we have a very cumbersome process and so we hope uh, in time we will improve it uh, but i do believe that this is uh, something also the way china has gone ahead the, the way they have learned from their experiences i i went to the chinese communist party and they explained to me the process of meritocracy how everything is analyzed how there's a constant think tank thinking of how to improve themselves so this is uh, remarkable about the way you uh, china has gone ahead and and looks like it will leave all the countries behind uh, within the next decade uh now pakistan since my government has come into power we have taken a conscious decision that we will make it easier and easier for investment investors to come into pakistan and we will want them to make profits in pakistan we will encourage profitability 
Uh, we had uh, a, a mindset where uh, businesses, when they started making profit, there was uh, some sort of an envy in our system, in our bureaucracy, amongst our politicians, and they would somehow want to pull them down. This government is the first government since 1960s which is encouraging businesses now, which wants them to make profits in Pakistan, which wants them to get rich in Pakistan. And my, the Prime Minister's office, Prime Minister's office is driving this, uh, uh, the opportunities for people to invest in, in our country. The ease of doing business is driven from the Prime Minister's office. Now we have just formed a CPEC authority because we were having problems in CPEC projects because they were under a lot of different ministries. Now we have decided that there will be one authority which will resolve all the problems of CPEC. And that authority will be the Prime Minister office so that it can, uh, we, my office can make it easier for people investing in Pakistan, people from China investing in Pakistan. Uh, I'm pleased to say that we have done a few things, which I will tell you. We have, uh, in Gwadar port and phase one of Gwadar free zone, that has been completed. <clears throat> and Gwadar airport will soon be completed. Work has started on it. Gwadar, Gwadar as you know, is the, is the port, the, one of the... Uh, 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 the whole idea of CPAC initially was to connect China to the Indian Ocean and to the Gwadar port. So we have also now, Gwadar's smart port city master plan has been improved finally. It took us time. Concessions for Gwadar port and free zone have been approved. Issues of tariff and pending payments on energy proje projects have been resolved. In the phase two of CPAC, our cooperation will focus on industrial cooperation, agriculture, very important agriculture. Pakistan has one of the most fertile lands, but unfortunately one of the lowest productivities. And that's what we hope to uh, learn from the Chinese experience of your high productivity, seed development, uh, in water management, in fisheries especially. So that is the next uh, um, emphasis and why j just as my commerce minister said why should people invest in Pakistan so there are five reasons which I want to again repeat Pakistan's strategic location Pakistan is one of the most strategic located places in the world number two we have a population of 220 million people and unlike China Pakistan's 60% of Pakistanis are below the age of 30. One of the youngest populations, which, is, which means a vibrant uh, population, a young, vibrant population, labor force. And then we have started this economic revival through reforms. You will be uh, uh, pleased to know, those who want to invest in Pakistan, that in the ease of doing business, Pakistan has made the biggest strides. We have gone up the greatest number in the whole of uh, South Asia. And overall in the world, we are number eight in a country that has made the greatest advances in ease of doing business. And then, of course, the industrial clusters through special economic zones. We are working on them. Some have moved ahead. Others are a little bit slow, but we are now specially concentrating on our special economic zones. And where do we want Chinese investment? We would love them. We would want Chinese investors to come. I've met this morning very, very powerful Chinese investors, some already there and some who want to expand their investment. So I've met them. And I must say, I was very happy this morning with the quality of investors we have. So we, we will facilitate them. But the sectors we want Chinese investment is number one textile, because Pakistan is one of the uh, biggest producers of cotton. Manufacturing, IT and financial services, 
We would like your people to come and help us there. Physical and technological logistics, food processing and agriculture, tourism and hospitality. Pakistan is one of the most untapped tourist potential places in the world. We have out of the six, uh, out of the uh, uh, 12 or 13 highest peaks, over 24,000 in the world, six are in Pakistan. Pakistan's northern areas are the, twice the size of Switzerland, and it has diversity, different mount, types of mountains. It has desert, it has plains, it has 1,000 kilometers of uh, sea coast. So it, has, it is very diverse, uh, a country which is not untapped for tourism so far. Secondly, Pakistan is one of the most, uh, for religious tourism, it is one of the most uh, sought after place for Buddhism. It was one of the centers of Buddhism. Texala was what, one of the centers of Buddhism. Um, then for Sikhism, then for Hinduism, uh, and then even for Christians, it has the highest number of church, churches in a non-Muslim, uh, in a non-Christian uh, city. Um, plus Pakistan is one of the, well, I can't say this here because China is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. But compared to the other countries in the world, Pakistan is one of the oldest countries with a 5,000 years old Indus Valley civilization. Um, housing, we are just starting on one of the most ambitious plans of housing in Pakistan. Uh, we have decided to build 5 million houses in uh, five years. Uh, Pakistan has a huge shortage of houses. We have we have at least a demand of uh, 10 million houses right now. So we, there's a big shortage. So we are trying to build in the next five years uh, 5 million houses and affordable houses for, for people who, can, uh, who, who cannot uh, buy uh, expensive houses. So we would uh, appreciate, we would invite Chinese investment there. And then oil and gas. In oil and gas, we have uh, huge areas which uh, they, we haven't had because of policies that discouraged drilling, we haven't had uh, much uh, uh, interest in there because now we have initiated policies for, for companies to come and drill in oil and gas. And then, of course, we, uh, one of the biggest copper and gold reserves, we have big uh, coal reserves in Pakistan in, in, in uh, Thar. So uh, we already have Chinese companies in both, in, in, in gold as well as in coal. Six security situation in Pakistan has improved. There was a time when people were scared to come to Pakistan because of our security situation. Thanks to our intelligence agencies, our security forces, Pakistan is now one of the safest places. And so that no, no longer is the issue. But we have specially created security forces to protect our Chinese workers there. So for Chinese, we have actually cr created a special force so that, you know, to provide them extra security. Uh, our liberal, uh, our visa regime. We have liberalized our visa regime. For Chinese nationals, they can actually come and get visa at the airport. This was not the case before we had a very difficult visa regime. So that has been, that has been eased up. And it is also for 70 other countries, we have uh, allowed them to come and get visas at the airport. Uh, all the major cities of Pakistan are connected with air routes now. This is now exactly where China was in 1978. This is where Pakistan is now. It's a great time to come and invest in the country. Uh, our labor cost, as uh, my Minister of Commerce said, our labor cost is only about 20%, 20% of what is, what is the labor cost in China. So there is a comparative advantage now. We have, uh, uh, of course, developing the free trade, uh, trade agreement with China now to the next phase. We are developing that further. And uh, Pakistan, of course, the, because of its location, it gives uh, Chinese companies coming into Pakistan to re-export from Pakistan it's much easier, bearing in mind the trade restrictions right now, 
on Chinese goods. So, finally, this is a great opportunity. I have specially come here, uh, especially here, I came here today to talk to the uh, Chinese investors. This is the time to come to our country. And I, from me, as the Prime Minister, I can assure you that the Prime Minister's office will be dealing with all the major investors in our country. And CPAC will be dealt again from the Prime Minister's office, so to make it easy for you to invest there and to remove all hurdles that are in your way. It's an exciting time in Pakistan because as we open up our country for business, it is a great opportunity for people to come and invest. And as we change the mindset in Pakistan, we want businesses to come and make money. We want businesses to come to China and make big profits so that the more profits you make, we feel that more investors will come to Pakistan. Our main aim is that as we create wealth in our country, we want to raise, like China, we want to raise the people out of poverty as China has done in the last 30 years. Thank you very much. Subscribe and bell the bell so that you don't forget to subscribe.